Langhorne Speedway, the most dangerous track in NASCAR history. Langhorne Speedway, often referred to as the Horn, was a one-mile dirt oval track, notable for its unique circular design, making it a place where drivers were constantly turning. Inaugurated in 1926, this Pennsylvania track, located just north of Philadelphia, is sadly synonymous with motorsports tragedies. Over five decades, the Speedway witnessed the deaths of 18 drivers, five motorcyclists, three spectators, and one flagman. Stay tuned to discover its poignant history in NASCAR. Established by the National Motorsport Racing Association in 1926, the track faced near bankruptcy in 1929 due to mismanagement, issues in track upkeep, and low attendance. Ralph Hankinson intervened in 1930, ushering in more races and reinvigorating the venue. A significant milestone came in 1940 when stock car racing, predominantly a southern sport at the time, was introduced to the Speedway. Langhorde Speedway hosted numerous notable events for sportsmen and modified cars. Racing greats like Mario Andretti, AJ Foyt, Al Unser, and Bobby Unser have all celebrated victories here. The track also played a significant role in NASCAR history, hosting just the fourth official NASCAR race in 1949, won by Curtis Turner. Despite being a newcomer to the NASCAR schedule, Langhorne offered an impressive cash prize, securing its place in future races. By the 1950 season, the Speedway held two out of 19 NASCAR Grand National races. Moving on to the infamous 1952 race at Langhorne, it is remembered for a series of accidents, many due to the adverse weather conditions. Nelson Applegate experienced a severe crash, ending his budding career, while Larry Mann's tragic accident became the first fatal crash in NASCAR history. An old superstition surrounding green cars in motorsports, believed to bring misfortune, gained traction as Mann's car was green. There were other significant accidents during the race, resulting in injuries to drivers and mechanics. Surprisingly, NASCAR decided to add another race to Langhorne in 1953, a decision that raised eyebrows given the track's concerning safety record. In June 1953, after a peaceful race in May, NASCAR drivers returned to the notorious Langhorne Speedway. This race was distinctive as it marked the first NASCAR event permitting foreign cars to compete, featuring six Jaguars, two Porsches, a Volkswagen, and an Aston Martin. Tragedy struck during practice when Frank Arford's car catastrophically crashed, leading to his death, the track's second NASCAR fatality. On the subsequent race day, accidents persisted, resulting in grievous injuries to multiple drivers. Mario Andretti, an iconic figure in the racing world, once remarked about the dread Langhorne evoked, emphasizing the apprehension he felt every time he was scheduled to race there. The driver who eventually became one of the world's best was standing in Langhorne infield, April 7, 1963, when Bobby Marvin lost control of his sprint car and slammed into the outside rail. The car rolled side over side into traffic and was T-boned as it burst into flames. Marvin never had a chance. When he flipped, the car landed on its wheels, but it was on fire and he burned to death. Andretti said. I watched poor Bobby burn to death. Rex White, a former NASCAR champion, and Cotton Owens provided insights into the design flaws of the track and the physical toll it took on drivers. They built that racetrack upside down. The holes were up and the smooth side was down. Because the track was round, you couldn't see very far ahead of you. If you suddenly ran up on cars, it was hard to dodge them. You're running pretty fast, so if you hit, there was a lot of impact. From 1956 through 1970, Langhorne Speedway experienced its golden age under the sanctioning of the United States Auto Club, showcasing open wheel races. Legends such as AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti, Parnelli Jones, Bobby Unser, and Gordon Johncock all graced its tracks. In particular, many believe it was at Langhorne where Andretti built his early prominence. Yet, the peril of the track was always evident. In 1960, Jimmy Bryan tragically lost his life in a crash at Pugh Hollow, and Hugh Randall met a similar fate two years later. In a particularly haunting incident in 1963, Andretti witnessed a devastating crash at the same spot where Bobby Marvin collided with the guardrail and perished in the ensuing fire. In an attempt to enhance track safety, Freed and Gerber undertook significant modifications in 1965. They revamped and paved Langhorne, transforming it into a D-shaped layout, introducing a new back straight, and subtly altering other corners. The notorious dip, Puke Hollow, was smoothed out in the process. Although the renovated Langhorne was faster and indisputably safer, many opined that it lost its original challenging allure. 
Despite the improvements, serious accidents persisted, such as the incident where Mel Kenyon suffered severe burns, losing fingers on his left hand. Thankfully, no more lives were lost post-renovation. As the track evolved, its popularity waned among some drivers. The escalating speeds, especially with rear-engine vehicles, meant that Langhorn became a grueling test of endurance. Drivers contended with intense lateral g-forces, making the experience rather strenuous. Having an oversteering car was key to speed, but it also heightened the risk of colliding with a wall. AJ Foyt summed up the sentiment of many with his straightforward critique. They screwed it up when they paved the track. Despite the continuous attendance of enthusiastic fans, the driver's discontent became increasingly apparent. As time passed, major racing series began excluding Langhorn from their itineraries. A range of vehicles, from sprint cars, midgets, and motorcycles to stock cars, ceased their appearances there. Though IndyCars persisted until 1970, when Langhorn was slated to the USAC's 1971 schedule, a covert meeting after the Trenton race saw the drivers unanimously opting for a boycott. This decision led to the cancellation of the race, much to the chagrin of Freedom Gerber. The future of the Speedway had been uncertain for quite some time. The once modest facilities around the circuit had markedly degraded over the years, and burgeoning suburban development began encroaching upon the track's surroundings. The enticements from property developers became irresistible. By 1967, Fried and Gerber declared the sale of the land to mall developers, although racing activities continued for another five seasons. The curtain finally fell on Langhorne Speedway on October 17, 1971, as Roger Treekler took the victory in the National Open for modified stock cars. Shortly after the final race, construction machinery rolled in, marking the end of an era for Langhorne Speedway where once roaring engines and cheering crowds echoed, a shopping center now stands. Yet, a portion of the original land remains untouched, and remnants of the initial dirt track can still be discerned amidst the overgrowth. A lone historical marker, established in 2006, stands as a testament to the site's illustrious contribution to motorsport history. The world of motorsports was since jolted into reality following the tragic death of Dale Earnhardt in the 2001 Daytona 500. Recognizing the imperative for change, NASCAR promptly responded with sweeping safety reforms. As a result of these measures, drivers today take to the track with confidence in their safety, as voiced by Kyle Petty. Since Earnhardt's death, the 29th fatality in NASCAR's history, no driver has suffered a similar fate during a competition. Yet, the shadows of the past still linger. Ralph Liguori, who passed away in July 2020 at the age of 93, possibly harbored a lifetime of guilt and speculation. Whether or not his actions inadvertently led to man's crash, Liguori took these doubts to his grave. The evolution of racing safety is not just technological, it's deeply personal, a journey from traumatic histories to safer futures. In recent times, NASCAR's focus on safety has been commendable. Although the sport today is incomparably safer than seven decades ago, concerns about concussions and other injuries persist. It's critical to remember, however, that while today's discourse is on concussions, which rightly merits attention, during NASCAR's formative years, fatal and life-altering accidents were frequent, with races proceeding at perilous tracks without significant modifications. This evolution underscores the progress the sport has made in prioritizing safety. Langhorne Speedway, with its storied history and treacherous turns, stands as a testament to the relentless spirit of motorsport in its early days. Beyond the loud roars of engines and adrenaline-packed races, the track was witness to both the zeniths of triumph and the harrowing prices of ambition. Its legacy serves as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made in the pursuit of speed and glory and the Speedway underscores the importance of evolving safety standards in racing, and acts as a silent memorial for the brave souls who once dared its challenging curves. So we can remember the Speedway, by good or by bad, because it is certain that we will not see one of its kind ever again in NASCAR. Thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment down below. Would you like to see a track like Langhorn again? Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.